So we've been listening a lot today, looking and listening a lot. So much has been shared with us. And uh, the very first speaker today, Julian Treasure, talked about the need to increase our ability to listen or return to um, teaching those skills, how to be present uh, with each other in new ways. And as Bertie said, I'm someone who likes to do that. Uh, I've been blessed to be able to do that in the last uh, five years of my life in particular. And I often do it through games, uh, bringing us to be present with each other in ways uh, that bring an openness, uh, a receptiveness, a, a curiosity even to the moment. So I'd like to begin right now, especially following on that amazing talk from Ladina. Thank you so much uh, for talking about the gift of grace. Uh, when I saw that I was lined up uh, with your talk, I, I knew it was going to be uh, uh, quieting of my own nervousness about being up here because that's such a, a natural transition for me. I'd like us to just do an experiential thing right now to bring us into the grace of the moment together. Because we've been, we've been trying to give our attention all day to all these different uh, speakers and topics. So just right now, uh, I'm going to invite you to stand up. You've probably been tired of sitting all day. I'm going to invite you to wiggle and stretch in any way that you want to. Yeah. And then I want you, um, just as uh, Shelley had us do earlier today, let's all take a breath together in unison. Breathing in and exhaling. Let it go with an ah. <sighs> And that was so good, let's do that again. Inhale, full breath. Exhale, let it all go. <sighs> and three's a charm, let's do it one more time. Inhale, and exhale, let it go. <sighs> good. And then finally, one more little triplicate that I like to do. Raise up on your toes, and then just drop to your heels. And feel yourself arriving here again. Raise up, settle down. One third time, raise up, settle down. Now just feel your sense of connection to the floor, your feet there, you're grounded. And I'm gonna invite you now to go ahead and take your seat in a, with a real intentional way, with awareness, take your seat again as one whole community here for this tiny bit of time that I have with you. And I want you to not let go of that intentional awareness. I want you to see if you can keep it going. So put your attention just for a moment in your feet. Again, wiggle your toes. Feel your feet on the floor. And feel the sense of your body sitting here in the chair, in the cushion. And feel the way your body feels sitting in the space of this room. You have this separate individual body that you're in but also see if you can feel a sense of yourself placed within the whole of this gathering right now. And I'm going to invite you to expand that out a little bit more. Extend down through your feet with your attention and your awareness and feel below that floor and below the concrete, the earth itself that is holding us all. And then even expand your awareness around you to your closest neighbors on your left and your right and before you and behind you. And then go ahead and expand it out a little bit more. Feel a sense of where we are in this ecosystem right now. Feel the sense of the land around us, the, the water and the sky, the features of the forest and the fields, and even all the other living beings that are here in this even little one mile radius around us. And feel yourself as in this individual body, but as connected and in interconnected with this whole, this whole ecological community. And then extend that again, farther a little bit more to this whole Blue Ridge Plateau, this sense of place here. And then again, to the sense of the Turtle Island that we're all floating on as the natives call it, and then the sense of the planet, and then even the cosmos. The reason I'm really so glad to be following what Ladina was sharing is that um, I'm going to tie back into what Fred first was saying, how there's a need for a, a new story, a story that makes more sense, places us within a context of the relationships 
our interdependent relationships with the ecosystem. But I think uh, there's an even wider story to be told, and uh, I'm going to draw from the work of Thomas Berry, um, who speaks about the great story and how we can place ourselves within the context of the entire universe and the story of the entire universe, the cosmos. Again, for many people, that has a, uh, there's a religious context for that, and for others, it's more of a cosmological way of placing yourself. Whatever it is that uh, helps you come into that perspective, what Thomas Berry says is that the universe is a communion of subjects. It is not a collection of objects, you know, objects just to be uh, uh, used and abused and, and uh, even recycled. It, it's a communion of subjects, and each with its own interiority and numinous presence. Let me say that again, a communion of subjects each with its own interiority and numinous presence. And if we can find ways to replace ourselves in the story of that greater context, then it really is about relationships. Thomas Berry says relationships are the primary context of existence. And so what I've been doing with my work, with young people in particular, is I'm teaching something called relational mindfulness. How to, first of all, pay attention and give our attention on purpose to come into presence, be in the present moment together, and within uh, a perspective and an attitude of openness, curiosity, and receptivity and connectivity. The thing about relational mindfulness that I found um, when I share that with people, just as Jenny Finn said when she was talking about how those seventh graders responded, every time I go into a group and begin working with them, I see how hungry um, people are, how starved, not just nature deficit disorder, but authenticity, direct connectedness, uh, attentional deficit disorder uh, we, we have. And so when you invite people to come into presence together, this, this spilling over of unfelt and unexpressed emotions, uh, it's coming not just from their own lived experience, but even generations worth. Some of the experts uh, about trauma uh, in, the, in the world now say that each generation's unfelt and unresolved trauma gets passed on down through uh, the way they raise their children, the way they raise their children. And we keep finding so many incidents of people not having healthy ways to feel, express, and resolve their, their, their conflicts and their traumas. And then we have the kind of problems that we've been seeing in the world, epidemics of depression, anxiety, addiction, and even uh, relational aggression, things spilling out into the community. So I want to share with you um, another perspective about what we might do in relation to helping people to heal, not just the ecosystems, but we've got to start right where we are in terms of our own inner ecosystem, if you will, our own interiority, and the interiority of our families and our communities. If relationships are the primary context of existence, and we all have a need to feel connected and a sense of belonging, uh, even that sense of place that Fred talked about, and our, our place within that, how do we make a contribution to it? Then. The most disabling condition anyone can experience is loneliness, actually. And that comes from a, of a man named David Pataniak, who works with people with disabilities, and he's an advocate, trying to help people see that one of the most disabling conditions is not what, what, what you're lacking, but it's if you don't have someone to help you bear with it and go along with it. And you've heard many people today tell stories of that uh, real directly. So this sense of connection to others, 
and coming into relationship with others. Uh, the title of my talk was The Gift of Awareness and the Medicine of Community. It turns out we unwrap the gift of the self, of who we are, the, the unique gifts and talents and medicine we're bringing to the world, we unwrap it in the presence of others. We need other people to see, acknowledge, and reflect to us that goodness that's in us. And when they do so, we become more aware of it and more encouraged and inspired to go onward with it. So the gift of self-awareness and the gift of relational awareness is that we come to know our interconnectedness and our interdependence with each other. And I think until we start doing that a lot more within our, our, our human realm of existence, the idea that we're gonna get more connected to nature and more connected to sustaining the world and the earth out there, um, the earth is right here. This is the earth walking as a man, and, and that's the earth walking as a woman. We've got to do that work of internal self-awareness and then connect that to the other moving parts that we are in relationship to. So I just want to leave you now with this um, simple uh, phrase that comes from the Native American tradition, and that's where um, we're, all, we're all relatives at every level of the cosmos from the minutest molecule all the way up. We're all in relationship to each other. And the phrase from Lakota says, metakwie oyasin, means we're all relatives. We're all in relationship. So we can come to that relationship with a sense of reverence, a sense of sacred presence. And as Thomas Berry says, we will never um, work to save anything we don't hold to be sacred and essential. Thank you.